Thank you, Mirella, for having me. Um, okay, so I'll just start my camera so you'll be able to see me. There you go. Hello, everyone. Um, and welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, and believe me, I, I would prefer to be in person in Europe. I miss Europe so much. Uh, and see you and, you know, have coffee or beer or whatever together. Uh, but this is the best we can do right now. So here we go. Uh, thank you for joining me um, for the session about the locking mechanism in the database. My name is Diron, and uh, on the screen you can see my contact info. Um, I should add my LinkedIn as well, but I'm on LinkedIn. It's, it's not very difficult to find me. If you would like to connect or follow me on Twitter, send me email, whatever. Um, okay, so I'm originally from Israel, which is the purplish area in the Middle East, and that's very close to Europe. So I've been to Europe uh, many times, uh, and I miss Europe, as, I'm, as I said. Um, a little bit over five years now, uh, me and my family, my wife and two kids, we moved all the way across the world to Vancouver in Canada, and this is where we live now. Um, and as Mirella said, it's your afternoon, but it's my morning. It's 9 a.m. here, um, and, you know, it's a beautiful day unlike yesterday that was raining. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's morning here and um, I'm happy to be here. A little bit about myself. So I've been in Oracle DBA since uh, 1998 and uh, Oracle 7. Most of my career, I've been a, a database consultant and here in Canada, I'm a, um, a senior self-employed consultant, independent. Uh, I'm working with all kinds of different companies, uh, different projects from designing and implementing uh, infrastructure stuff like uh, HADR, um, DataGuard, RAC, stuff like that. Um, SQL tuning, instance tuning, and, and all the way to schema design and working with developers and SQL tuning and stuff like that. Um, I have my own website called gotodba.com. You're more than welcome to go and subscribe if you'd like to get updates when I publish something. Uh, I have a technical blog there. It's mostly, mostly technical, not only, but mostly technical. And I have some other um, content as well, like, uh, you know, a series about uh, becoming a consultant and becoming a speaker and stuff like that. So if you'd like to uh, go and check it out. Um, I'm also very involved in the community and here in Vancouver, I'm the president of the British Columbia Oracle user group and, um, and I'm an Oracle based director. So that's it. And let's start with the session. So we'll talk today about um, the locking mechanism called uh, also NQ. And we talked about, we will talk about the basics. We'll talk about the, the types and different modes of uh, locks. Um, and we'll see some basic scenarios um, when we we execute DMLs and DDLs, what's going on in the database, and then we'll go that that will be quite short, and then we'll go uh, into some more advanced locking scenarios, and I also have demos. Hopefully, they will work. Um, I'll have demo. I'll have demos with all kind of different uh, advanced scenarios. So let's start with the basics. Why do we have locking? Okay, so um, in a database. Um, Unlike Excel, and I hope you understand this joke, um, we have many concurrent people accessing the same data, okay, querying, changing it, and we need to manage that. We need some sort of a serialization mechanism, so we'll, people will not conflict when they, ch when they um, change the same um, exact data. Okay, so we need some sort of mechanism that will allow only one person to change a specific data in the database while allowing other people to change other um, pieces of data in the in the database, uh, and then manage you know the access uh, to this data. So in Oracle we use the NQ mechanism or locking. It's a, it's a type of locking, um, and in Oracle there are some characteristics for these um, operations or lockings uh, or locks basically. Um, first of all, reads queries on the data never lock rows. I'm not talking about select for update, I'm, not, I'm talking about regular select. This will never lock rows and prevent other people from uh, changing these rows. And simple reads, selects, will never be blocked by other 
locks, okay? There are some very few rare exceptions, but as a general rule, when you select data, you, you won't lock other people and you won't be blocked by other people, okay? So this is very important to remember. Once you start changing data, then you might lock other people or uh, changing structure, then you might lock other people. Uh, and the locking order is first in, first out, meaning that if user one is changing some a row in the database and user two wants to change that and it's waiting because the data is locked, and then user three is waiting because it, it wants to change the same data as well, and then user four, once user one uh, released the lock and finished that, its operation, his, their, their operation, and uh, released the lock, user two wa was the first one to get in line, so user two will get the lock. And after user two releases the lock, user three will get it because this is uh, the order they requested the lock, okay? So what types of lock do we, we have in, in Oracle? We have tons, dozens of different types, but in this presentation, we'll, we are going to talk about um, data, locks about, on data. So we'll basically focus on two types. The TM type, which is locking at the table level, the entire table, and the TX lock, which is locking at the row level. And this is the, the most granular locking in Oracle, okay? I cannot lock a specific column in a specific row. When I lock, when I change a row, it doesn't matter which column of the row I'm changing, I'm locking the entire row for other changes. As I said, there are lots of uh, other locks as well. Uh, US for undo segments and HW for segment uh, high watermark and IN for uh, in memory segment create and drop and, and dozens more, okay? But most of them are all kind of different internal operations or uh, like background operations. Um, and TM and TX are basically very coupled with changing data in the, in the databases, you know, stuff that the application is doing. Okay, so this was the lock types, TM and TX. Now, there is another thing called lock mode. And lock mode is divided into general, in, in general, two groups, shared locks and uh, exclusive locks. And the concept of that is that share lock allows other people to get the same lock uh, at, on, the on the same data at the same time, okay? So multiple people can hold share lock on the same data at the same time. Exclusive lock allows only one person to get this, this lock, okay? So if one person uh, holds exclusive lock on a specific um, data, other users will not be able to get any lock. And when I hold share lock, other users can hold share lock as well. We'll go into that in the, in the next slide a little bit more. Um, we'll deep dive into that a little bit more. Uh, in Oracle, when we talk about lock mode, there are names as well to um, every lock mode, at least in some cases, but uh, we, we have the, the lock mode uh, represented as numbers from zero to six, where zero is basically no lock, and one to six are lock, one also I can I don't usually see but when when we, we talk about TX usually we'll get six TX is the row level lock usually when we lock a row it will be in exclusive mode six and when we hold a table lock it might vary between two and six and that depends on what exactly you do on this table okay uh, so again the lock modes are zero to six as the number is higher, the lock mode is more aggressive, let's say. Um, and when we are locking data, TX, row level, will be usually six. TM, table level, will be uh, two to six. And let's see the comp comp compatibility. So when we lock a table in TM, TM type, in, um, on the table itself, we have level two to six, as I said. And in, here in this diagram, you can see the, the V mark and the X mark to see what is compatible with what. So for example, if my operation, the operation that I'm doing on the table needs a share lock, that's level four here, I hope 
I hope you can see my, my um, cursor. So uh, level four is share, for example. Level four is right here, this row. Okay, so other users will be able to share to lock the table in in level four as well, but not level three, not level five, or not level six. So if they want le level five, they will wait until I release my level four. Level four. But if my operation is row exclusive lock on the table, which is level three, other users will be able to lock in level three, not in level four, five, or six. They will wait. But two or three are compatible. They can hold them. They can hold a lock at level two or three at the same time that I'm holding my lock on the same table at level three. Okay, so this is a, basically the, the um, uh, sort of a table that explains what is compatible with what. And when, we'll, when we see that later on in, in some of the demos, usually we'll use three, but uh, I think one example uses four as well. So we'll see that. Okay, and this is a little bit, uh, you know, a lot of text for, for a slide, and I'm not going to go over, over the entire slide, but um, I just wanted to have that so you'll see all the information. This is uh, dictionary views uh, and data dictionary views that are related to locks. So uh, in my demo, we will check Vidola lock, which, which contains all the locks in the system. Okay, but there are other views that you can see in order to identify locks. For example, DBA blockers and DBA waiters. Okay, so if I have a lock that blocks someone else, someone else is waiting for my lock, I'm a blocker, they are a waiter. Okay, so I will see myself in DBA blockers, I will see them in DBA waiters. And then Vidora locked objects is um, a list of all the objects, you know, on the, from the object perspective. Uh, which objects are locked and and so on and so forth. So so you have all the information here and if you are trying to investigate some sort of a, of a locking issue, you have all the information here to see which view will be, will be uh, most suitable uh, to diagnose this problem. Sorry, this problem. So let's move on. Basic locking scenarios. So until now we we saw, you know, we talked about the general need and general concepts of, of locking and I will talk about specific scenarios. So DML, insert, update, delete. When I'm changing data in, the, in a table, okay, I will lock the specific column, the T, uh, uh, sorry, specific row, the TX type, the specific row, or rows, depends what I change, in exclu exclusive mode. And that will not allow other DMLs on the same rows, okay? So if I'm uh, deleting a row, nobody else will be able to update this specific row, okay? Um, when I'm inserting, updating, or deleting into a specific table, I also lock the table itself, the TM type, in level three, which is a row exclusive mode, okay? And level three, if you don't remember from, you know, the, the slide with the compatibility, level three is uh, compatible with other level threes. So basically, if I'm inserting a, a, a row, I will lock this specific row in level six, or actually there is no row, but I, I will have some, uh, you know, transaction. Actually, the TX is, is a transaction level lock. Okay, it will, it will lock all kinds of different resources relevant to my, um, to my uh, transaction, uh, and the row is one of them. So I'll basically hold a, a TX lock at level six and the TM level three on the table. So other people will be able to insert into this table and you know, delete other rows, update other rows. That would not be a problem because they will hold the TX on their specific rows, which is, compatible with mine because I'm holding on my row and they're holding the lock on their rows, that's fine. And we both hold a, a level three lock on the table, which is compatible and that's fine. So we'll see three, we'll, we'll see two locks at level three, level three on the table and that's fine, okay? But it will not allow DDLs on the table because as, as we're going to see in the next slide, DDL is, uh, needs a different lock that is not compatible with TM3, okay? And all locks are released when I commit the transaction or roll it, roll it back, 
Okay, and that's, you know, it releases all the locks automatically, everything that I hold. So DDL, when I'm doing a DDL, like um, alter, alter table or, uh, you know, obviously drop table when I, when I want to drop table, I hold an exclusive lock at the TM, the table level lock. So if someone is inserting into this table and holds level three lock on this table, that's not compatible with level six. So I will have to wait until there they commit or roll back the, the transaction and the table is free of locks in order for me to get the lock and do the operation on the table. Okay, and remember, DDL is not transactional, meaning that I can't commit or roll back that after, okay? Once I run a DDL, it will release all the previous, uh, all, it will close the open transaction and release all the existing lock, locks that I have. Okay, so this is very important to remember. Uh, now, if I'm trying to, uh, let's say, drop a table or alter a table and get TM6, and uh, this table is locked, I will get Aura 54, uh, which is, uh, object is, is locked, okay? Um, but since 11G, I can change a setting, a, a parameter in the session, at the session level or the system level called DDL lock timeout. And once I set that to a non-zero value, that means that a DDL can wait for locks to be released. And then if after this timeout is exceeded and the locks were not released, then I will get the Aura 54. Okay, so if I'm trying to drop a table, but that this table has tons of transactions and they you know, come and go and I cannot get a lock, I can change the DDL lock timeout to, I don't know, 600, 600 seconds, 10 minutes, and then this drop operation will wait for 10 minutes. Um, and only after 10 minutes, if I can't still get the, the, get the lock, it will uh, fail with Aura 54, okay? Also, at the, T, the TM level, <clears throat> sorry, I can use a manual locking. Okay, there is a, a syntax in uh, SQL called lock table, and I can lock table the table name in any level that I want. Okay, so manually I can I can hold the lock um, at any level, and this by default waits for the object to for the lock to to be acquired. Okay, so if I'm um, if I run lock table, it doesn't uh, it's it's not related to the DDL lock timeout. It will wait until the, the table is, uh, you know, free and I can lock it. Awesome. So complex scenario. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. I'll start with still the a bit simple ones, uh, but here I'll, I have demos as well. So deadlocks. I have a table here at the bottom and two uh, people, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left is blocking the you know brown uh, wooden row i just had, had a pattern here uh, and the one on the right is locking the i don't know gray marble one the top one um and that's fine because both of them are holding are holding a tm table level lock level three which is compatible with each other and then the one on the right is locking the first row in level six the one on the left is holding the second row in level six and that's fine because this is a different set of data and now the one on the right is trying to lock the second row the the wooden one okay and obviously it tries to lock it at tx level six which is incompatible with the one on the left t that is already holding tx level six so it's waiting and then the one on the left is trying to lock the first one and it's waiting as well. But the problem here is that we got to a dead end, okay? Both are waiting and they are locking each other. So basically there is no way to re gracefully release this lock, right? So in this case, Oracle will be the one who figure that out. It will say, oh, you, you've got a deadlock here and it will release. So let's start with this example, deadlock. Okay, now I want to explain how my um, demos work. 
So I will have a few windows. I hope you see them. Okay. And okay. Oh, not this one. Sorry. Okay. So I have three sessions here. Session one, session two, and session three. Okay. Okay. And I'm connected to a, a PDB 19.6. This will be all my demo. And uh, every time I, I demo, I present the demo, I'll, I'll show you these, uh, these uh, DOS windows, SQL plus, and uh, we'll see what's going on. So in this case, session one is holding a, um, a lock on ID one, the same table, session two on ID two and session three on ID three. Session one is trying to update ID two. Obviously it's locked. Session two is we'll try to update session uh, ID three, which obviously it's locked because of session three. And session three will try to lock uh, ID one. So what I want to show you here is that first deadlock is not necessarily two person thing okay it can be a three people three sessions it can be much more um and the second thing is that i actually don't know which one a oracle will you know kick out so we'll have to wait and see okay so it took a, a little bit of time for oracle to realize that and it saw that it, it decided to uh, stop session one and it says, okay, aura 60 deadlock detected. Now, at this point, only this SQL was uh, canceled, okay? It canceled only this one. The transaction is still on. The locks are still held, being held by session one, okay? So only the last SQL was canceled. But now one, once we have a, one session that is free, okay? So this session can be, can do rollback or, you know, commit or whatever and release the entire thing. So if I'm going to release the ID one, we're going to see session three, get the lock. Okay. Once I executed rollback, this one, uh, session three got released. And once I do rollback here, session two will be released and everything is fine. Okay. So once we have a, once we have a deadlock, uh, we cannot gracefully solve the, pro the problem. That's why Oracle have to interfere and say, okay, we have a, you know, unsolvable uh, scenario here. I will just cancel one of the queries and then it's your job to, um, to do the rest. Um, one more comment about that. Deadlocks are usually not the DBA's problem. Okay, usually it's a, it's a <clears throat> sorry, Usually it's the development, uh, it's a development issue, and this can be solved only by the developers uh, to figure out why uh, there is a deadlock and find a way to, you know, do the, the flow of the locks or the update or whatever uh, in a certain way so we won't have uh, deadlocks anymore. Let's move on. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Okay, next. When you think about that, um, when I insert new rows into the table, basically I'm locking the table at TM3, but it's insert, it's a new row. I'm locking this new row, right? So there's no way that an in to insert will not be able to, to occur or to... Um, you know, two sessions won't be able to insert a rows into the table and they will lock, it, lock each other. So we're gonna see two examples how inserts actually can lock each other. And one of them is unique constraint. So usually when I insert a row, I'm not going to block any other person because I'm locking my row, my new newly created row, in level six, but nobody else can actually try to lock my row, right? So there is no conflict. But if I have a unique constraint, there is another part of my transaction is that the updating of the index that enforces the uniqueness, okay? So if we will insert 
uh, two rows from two different sessions with the same unique value, there will be some lock at the transaction level lock that will actually happen on the index level and it will block uh, the other session from inserting the same data. Okay, so let's see this. Oh, actually I have another example for deadlock, but okay, we'll see if, if we have time and we want to, we can get back to it. Uh, okay, so let me start the example here about the unique. Who is that? Okay. Okay. So here I'll start using a monitor session as well, and we'll have this monitor session uh, in other in the other uh, demos as well. This is session number one, okay, and this is session number two, like before. Just put it here, and this is the monitor. And um, just a second, sorry. Okay, so unique. Okay, let's start. Session one, I'm inserting into a table called UK, and the UK table has a primary key or unique constraint on, on uh, the first column, okay? So I'm inserting into the UK and here, uh, into the UK table, and here uh, is the monitor. And just to explain, what I'm doing here is basically I'm querying vidola lock as I told you before, and I join that with DBA objects. Okay, and then I'm querying only TM and TX, and what we see here is the SID of the uh, the SID of the session, the lock type which is TM or TX. ID one is basically the object that I'm locking. In TM is the table ID. In TX is a is a sort of a transaction ID. Um, and then the L mode and the request. So L mode is the lock mode that I'm holding and request that if I'm waiting, what lock mode I'm waiting for, okay? So here we see, as we expect, level three at the table level and level six at the transaction level, okay? Now, let's run session two. And you see that I'm inserting into the same table with the same value, okay? And I'm blocked, okay? And if I check here, you can see a few things. Two sessions, 28 and 455, are holding level three on the table. And that's fine, that's compatible and that's fine, okay? Both of them hold the transaction level at level six, okay? Which is fine. It's a different ID, it's a different transaction, okay? It's a different place, it's a, a different data because this row here, this row and this row are two different rows and that's fine. But there's another lock here, as you can see, that session 28 is not holding but it's waiting on level four and look at that, it, that's the same number, okay? So I see that there is some sort of locking that prevents the session on the right, session number two, from inserting the row because it's trying to lock some resource that is part of this transaction, okay? And only if I now rollback or commit that, we'll see the lock released and it will manage to insert the row or doesn't manage depends on what I do. So if I roll back this one, it will be successful. But if I, um, if I commit, it won't. Okay, so let's see if I when I commit, this one says, Oh, you know what, there's already a value with this. Uh, they're always sorry, they're always already a row with this unique value, you cannot insert the same row. Okay, the same value, that's a unique constraint. Okay. Okay, and that was that demo. How to lock, how insert can block each other. Inserts can block each other. Okay, next example. Direct insert. If you have ever used direct insert like the append hint or direct load with the data pump or best SQL loader or whatever, um, this is how it works, okay? If you don't know the, how direct insert works, um, 
let's review that really quickly. So this is my table. This is the entire thing is my table, and these uh, darker uh, blocks are the used blocks, and the lighter blocks are blocks uh, that are not used. They were never in use, and the high water mark is uh, is a, a marker on the furthest part of the table that was ever been in use. Okay, in use. So when I do a regular insert, Oracle will look for empty spots here in these used blocks and insert the row there. It doesn't matter if the, if the empty spot is at the beginning or in the middle or the end, it doesn't matter. If I don't have anywhere to put my row because all the blocks are full, I will insert the row here and move the high water mark, okay? Using the append hint or direct insert, what happens that the insert operation inserts everything under the high watermark. It doesn't look for uh, empty spots here and in, the, in the used blocks. It just put all everything, just pours the data after the high watermark. And then after the operation is completed, it will move the high watermark forward, okay? And this makes uh, the direct loads much uh, more efficient because they, they waste space because they don't look in, in areas here, but uh, they uh, bypass all kinds of different mechanisms like uh, undo mechanisms and redo logs and stuff like that, that, um, that we don't really need, or we need a very minimal information in order to roll back or, uh, or undo, roll back or redo these uh, direct inserts. Okay, so basically direct inserts go after the high watermark, okay? But the question is, what happens with regular inserts at the same time? Okay, because high watermark, the, the, be, sorry, because the direct insert is a special operation that works after the high watermark. And if I continue to uh, insert rows here, what happens if I don't have space and I need to insert a row after the high watermark and move the high watermark that might collide with the direct insert. So how, how is this handled? Okay, so let's see. Okay, so we have the monitor session here. Let's do this. And we have, oh, which session is that? Oh, we have only one session. Okay, great. Okay, so I insert into a table, okay? The append table, just a regular value. That's a regular insert. And let's see the monitoring. As we expect, as we saw before, TM level three, TX level six. Okay, so I hold the transaction lock at level six. I hold at the table lock level three. Now, if I want to run other inserts, update, delete, that's not a problem. They will acquire TM level three on the same table. That's compatible and level TX level six on a different transaction and that's fine, right? So let's commit that and then insert with the append hint, which is a direct insert. And let's see what happens now. Okay, I have the TM TX level six, but take a look at that. This is different. Okay, that's, a, that's the TM lock on the same table, but I'm holding a six. I'm holding a, an exclusive lock on this table. Okay, and if I'm holding exclusive lock on the table, if other inserts will try to uh, if other sessions will try to insert into this table right now, they will try to acquire TM level three, and that's not compatible. Okay, so basically when you insert append or, or performing a direct load into a table, you're locking this table in a TM level six exclusive lock on the table, on the, on the entire table, and you're not allowing other sessions to perform inserts, updates, and deletes, okay? So even though the load is very efficient, be aware that you're blocking other session from performing uh, very simple operations like DMLs on this table. Okay. Okay, next. Foreign keys, okay, foreign keys is a, is a huge topic, okay? 
In foreign keys, we have a parent, a parent table and the child table, and there is a foreign key between the child and the parent, okay? So what happens when we try to update, insert, or delete into the parent and the child? Because the foreign key is there in order to preserve the integrity of the data, uh, there might be problems when we insert or update or delete parents or children on this table. Okay, if I'll give you an example. If I insert into the child table, okay, Oracle will have to verify that the parent row exists. In order to do that, we don't want other sessions at the same time to modify the uh, parent table and you know, remove my parent right at the same time that could cause um, in, uh, consistency problems or, or integrity problems. Uh, so there are some very uh, specific scenarios and very unique cases in which uh, there, a problem might happen if we allow updating the parent and the child you know, freely at the same time. So Oracle, will, Oracle has to take care of that and it uses the locking mechanism or enqueues in order to solve that. So inserts into the parent, okay, will take TM lock level three on the child. Okay, any DML, this is how it works. Any DML on the child, insert, update or delete will take TM three on the parent. Okay, lock the table, lock the parent table and lock the child table if I'm updating the, if I'm inserting into the parent, okay? Now, what I didn't cover here in the two first two bullets are what happens when I update or delete from the parent, okay? And update on delete on the parent depends on the version of the database and the foreign key column index. So if, uh, if you ever, if you've ever heard that a foreign key column should have index, okay, because of um, uh, scalability issues. This is the reason, and I'll show you an example how it works. So from Oracle 11, Oracle actually changed the locking level to be uh, escalated. They escalated the lock level to, level to avoid uh, some Aura 600 that happened in a, in a very unique, uh, uh, in rare cases, but it did happen. So in Oracle 11G, they escalated the lock when updating or deleting the parent. Okay, and you have the bug number if you want to uh, dive into that a little bit. So how it actually works. Without an index on the foreign key, okay, when I update or delete the parent from the parent table, I will take TM level four, not three, on the child table, okay? And this TM level four will be released immediately once the, um, the SQL is done, okay? So not, it will not wait until I commit or rollback, okay? It will be released immediately when the SQL statement is done, okay? But during this update or delete operation, the TM4 will be held, okay? And the problem with TM4 is that it's not compatible with TM3. So basically, when I'm updating or deleting the parent, Okay, it will lock the child table and will not allow other DMLs on the table. Okay, and actually the problem might be more, and I'll show you that in the, in the demo, more the other way around. As long as there are DMLs on the child table, I won't be able to update or delete the parent because I'll be waiting to get TM4 on this table. Okay, however, with an index on the foreign key, update and delete on the parent will only acquire TM3 on the child, which is fine because TM3 is compatible with other TM3 and DMLs can happen on the child table at the same time, okay? But this TM3 will be held for the entire transaction, okay? So the TM4 without an index will be released immediately once the statement is over, okay? If it's waiting, it will wait with this lock until I can acquire the lock perform the operation and then release the lock. But it's not compatible with other DMLs on the child. But with the index, I will hold TM3, which is compatible with other DMLs on the child, but for the entire transaction, okay? So this is one of the reasons that uh, a foreign key 
index, index on the foreign key column is very important for scalability, okay? Um, and, and that's important to remember. So let's see the example. Let me look for that. Okay, found it. Okay, we've got session one here as always. Let's resize it a little bit. We've got the monitor as always. And we've got session two. We have only two sessions here. Okay, let's see what we do. What we do. Okay. So we'll start with session two. And I have two tables, parent and child. So I'm inserting into the child table. Okay, and let's see what's going on here. This is the monitor, same query as before. Okay, as you can see, I'm holding TX6, that's uh, fine. And then I'm holding TM3 on the child and 3M3, TM3, sorry, on the parent as well. Okay, so now people won't be able, for example, to alter or drop the parent table, which makes sense. I have a, a child, you know, in process here, uh, and I don't want people to mess around with, with my parent table, okay? And now I'm trying to delete from the parent, okay? I'm deleting a completely different row. This is the parent here is one. I'm inserting a child to the parent with ID one. And in this session, I'm deleting parent number three. Doesn't matter. I'm waiting, I'm blocked. And let's see what happens. Okay, so what I see here is I've got TM. Uh, sorry, okay, so this, the, the session two on the right hand side is 438. So 438 holds level three on the parent, level three on the child, and a transaction level six. That's fine. Session number one holds, sorry, this one, TM on the parent because it's, it's deleting from the table. So it needs TM like any DML, it's need, it needs TM on the parent, but it also tries to get TM4 on the child. And this is incompatible with the TM3 on the child, the session two is holding. Okay, so here is the conflict. This is the conflict, okay? And this will wait because it cannot get, get the lock. Then it will wait until it can get the level four lock. So let's allow it to get the level four lock. When I run a rollback, this one managed to delete. And if I look here in the monitoring, Okay, I don't see the level four anymore. Okay, I see only the TX6 and TM3 on the parent from this session, the, the session number one. Okay, I don't see the level four anymore. Once this is completed and I got the one row deleted, I can release the level four lock. But you saw the problem with scalability here. Okay, with concurrency here, okay? Okay, and let's continue. Let's release this entire thing. And let's do now this. I'm creating an index on the child table on the foreign key column, okay? And I'll do exactly the same thing. Insert, sorry, I'm inserting into the child. Yeah, it's, it's the same, right? Yeah, I'm inserting into the child, okay? With parent number one. And let's see what's going on here. Exactly the same, right? TM3 on the table, on the parent table, TM3 on the child table, and TM, TX6 on the transaction, okay? That's fine. Now, I want to do the same thing. Delete where ID is three, and this works. That's perfectly fine. And if I look at the monitoring here, I'll see all these locks both sessions are holding level mode three on both tables, okay? So as I said, session one is locking TM3 on the child table and it's not releasing it, okay? 
and each one has TX6 for its own transaction. Okay, I hope this is clear. And let's release that, and release that, and exit everything. Okay, so again, um, without the index, I, every the update or delete on the parent will try to get TM4, which is not compatible. That's what I. That's why I waited. But the TM4, once the statement is over, not a transaction, the statement is over, the lock is free, okay? But if I have index, I will hold TM3 for the entire transaction until the committer rollback, but it's TM3, which is compatible with other transactions on the child table, okay? So this is a very important concurrency issue, okay, and scalability. Next, DMLs and DDLs. I have this table. And what I want to do is perform some sort of DML on session A, with session A on the table. Sorry, insert, update, delete. I'm holding TX on the transaction, level six, TM level three on the table, and that's fine. And now, I want to lock the table or perform some sort of a DDL, drop, alter, um, or something like that. And I want to lock the table in level six. Obviously this waits, right? So that's fine. And that makes sense. We talked about that and it's understandable. But the question now, what happens if another session tries to run a DML on the table? And that's, an interesting question because there are two options here. One, option one is that this session C will, you know, be able to do whatever they want because it tries to get TM level three on the table, which is compatible with the TM three from session A. So it can actually run the DML and that should be fine. But the problem is that if I do that all the time, I'm actually starving session B, because if this is the behavior, session B will never be able to get the lock table six uh, on this table, because you know, we'll, you'll have all the time, you'll have new sessions performing DML on the tables because they are compatible with the, diff with the previous DMLs. So which one is it? Let's see. Think about that, see if you, if you figure out the answer. And in the meantime, I'll start my demo again. Okay, so we'll have the monitor here. And here we have lots of sessions. We've got session three here. We've got session two here. And session one here. Okay, so we have four sessions here. One, the monitor on the left, bottom left. And one, uh, and, and three sessions uh, to run the demo. Okay, so DDL. I'm going to insert into the DDL table, okay? Just a regular insert. And let's see what's going on. You should know that already. TM3 on the table, TX6 on the transaction. That's perfectly normal. Okay, now level session two will try to truncate the table. And I set the DDL lock timeout to 600, so we'll have 10 minutes to work on that, okay? So now the truncate table waits. Why? We can see that here. Because the truncate table wants, oh, sorry. The truncate table wants TM level six on the same object, but it's locked already with level three. That's incompatible. That's why, that's why I'm waiting. That's perfectly fine. Now the question is, what will happen with a DML from session three? Let's see if you guessed correctly. Oh, I'm waiting. So if I run them this again, look at this table, this row. Okay, in video lock, I see a TM level three on this object and it's waiting. Okay, even though this level three is compatible with this level three, this one, session three, is still waiting. 
okay? And this is because in the queue, if you remember, the, right at the beginning, I said that the locking mechanism is first in, first out, okay? So I want to get a lock, but somewhere, someone in front of me in the line wants to get a, a, a stronger lock that is not compatible with mine. So I will be nice, sort of speak, and wait and allow them to get to the, you know, be the first one in the queue, acquire the lock, and then once they release the lock, I can acquire it, okay? So once this one's created, uh, sorry, we, that once this one uh, completes the transaction, rollback, for example, immediately the truncate worked, okay? And truncate is a DDL. It's not a, um, a transactional operation. So it immediately got the lock, performed the, uh, the, the operation, the truncate, and then released the lock. It's, it's not a transactional. And once this session number two released the lock, session number three got it and inserted into the table. Okay, so this is also important to remember. In some cases, we can do, we can say, oh, we need to, I don't know, truncate the table, alter the table, add, add something, remove something, and we'll just, you know, increase the DDL lock timeout, and we do that, and we'll wait. And then, you know, once we get the lock, it will happen, and this is production, and that's fine. You need to remember that every operation from now on will be waiting until you finish. And that's, that might be a problem again. That might lock the entire system. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing that in a production system. Okay, you need a, you know, a maintenance window for that and, and do it properly. Okay, we have five minutes and we are right at the end. So that's good. Okay, and this is a specific scenario Okay, so a while ago, uh, Oren, um, a colleague and a friend of mine from Israel, he tweeted about excess excessive locking scenario, which is really weird and it still happens in, uh, in Oracle 19. So I have a demo for that. I don't know if, if we'll go through the demo, uh, but basically um, when the parent table is locked, if you want to drop the child table, you can't. You get Aura 54 that the object is locked. And, um, and the thing is that even if the table, the parent table is locked, there shouldn't be a problem to drop the child table. And you can see that you can drop the foreign key constraint or drop it without the recycle bin. But if you have recycle bin on, it, you will get the, the error. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. The, the other way around. If you it can be dropped to the recycle bin, but if you have recycle bin off or you try to drop it with purge, you will get the Aura 54. But you can remove the foreign king constraint and uh, drop the table when the, the parent table is locked. It's a very strange uh, scenario, but it's, it's still there. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. We have five minutes if you'd like to ask some questions. And I'll just move to the last um, slides so you can have my contact information again uh, if you want to be in touch and if you have a uh, question so let's see we have one question here for now what is the best practices avoiding TM and TX lock issues uh, basically you can't really avoid locking because locking is crucial to maintain the the integrity and consistency of the data uh, so the things that you need to uh, do, and that's, a, that's really best practices. I'm going back here. Okay, so first of all, with foreign keys, create an index on the foreign key columns to avoid this specific problem. Okay, uh, try not to get into this problem. Okay, so don't run DDLs that will just wait forever and lock all these sessions that coming afterwards. Uh, um, 
So these are two and um, and regarding deadlocks, okay, be aware of that and and follow that and and you know I had a I had a client that got deadlock. I didn't have you know I can't resolve that that was a completely um, a pure application issue, but. Uh, from the database side, you have all the traces, all the SQL statements that are that are executing and got this error and stuff like that. I collected all the information, provided that to the developers, and they managed to find a bug and fix it. So basically, you need to be aware. I'll just go back to the end. You just need to be aware of how things work. And once you are aware of that, you can avoid the excessive or the unnecessary things and also you can use you know the v dollar lock and all the other uh tables uh data dictionary views when you have locking issues figure this out and then you know try to resolve it but these are basically the best practices um okay another question you mentioned different behavior with foreign key with or without index but didn't mention why it behaves differently oh that's a good question um I'm not sure. I don't remember if I ever ever tried to to figure this out. Um, so I don't know. Um, I'm guessing that it's it has it has some sort of uh, you know more efficient operation that you can do at the index level, and then basically you do some some sort of uh, index uh, operation that you know can. Um, can eliminate the level four on the table, but I, I I don't know for sure what this is the case. I know that this is the case and I showed it to you, um, but I need to look it up, thanks. Um, is the compatibility matrix the same for different lock types? Uh, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure. I'll just go back to this. The question was about uh, this one, okay. If this is uh, true for all different locks, I would guess it would, but I don't know many other um, many other lock types that have more than one uh, lock mode. Okay, so for example, TX. I've never seen TX that on on with the lock mode that is not six. Okay, but TM has all these different modes. I. I don't remember seeing um, other lock types that have uh, different modes. So uh, this is a good question, but again, I, I've never run into these cases, but uh, I would guess it's the same code, so I would guess it would be the same pretty much. Uh, another question. I'm sorry if oh, you can ask, uh, answer very, very quick. We are, oh. We are, yeah, running late. Yeah, okay. So, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. do you want to just send these to me and then yes, uh, of course. I can answer them offline or something? Yes, of course. I'm sending to them, okay. to them, to you. <laughs> uh, thank, you so, <laughs> yeah. thank you so much, Liron. Sorry, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's okay. That's okay. It's, uh, uh, it's thank time you very for much. the next. Okay, and thank you very much, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yes, we enjoyed. Thank you so much, Liron. Have a good day. See Thanks. you in the Good next session. Bye. Thank you.